Hello all. Today we're going to look at one of the oldest and best known verses in the English language, Three Blind Mice. On that basis, I assume you know the rhyme and the tune, but let's run through it just in case. Three blind mice, three blind mice, see how they run, see how they run. They all run after the farmer's wife, who cut off their tails with a carving knife. Did you ever see such a sight in your life as three blind mice? So what's that all about, then? Well, at first sight, it appears to be a simple nonsense verse. But that wouldn't be any fun now, would it? And thankfully, lots of authors have speculated there's underlying meaning, which is much darker and more sinister, and we love that sort of thing on this channel. Let's start by looking at the origins of the rhyme in its earliest form. We know there was a rhyme making reference to three blind mice in the early 17th century, and it went like this. Three blind mice, three blind mice, Dame Julian, Dame Julian, the miller and his merry old wife, she scraped her tripe, lick thou the knife. Now that just sounds plain weird, and clearly there are quite a few differences to the rhyme here and the one we know today. But... When we look at the music, there's quite a lot of similarity. Albeit slower, and in a minor key, it's almost exactly the same. So I think we can assume they are connected. It runs like this. So let's see if we make sense of this version. It first appeared as one of a collection of 31 rounds and catches in 1609. A catch was a popular form of singing in the 16th and 17th century, using multiple voices. The publisher was Thomas Ravenscroft. He was a little-known composer born around 1592, meaning he was perhaps as young as 17 when he published the work. He trained as a chorister at St Paul's Cathedral and then studied at Cambridge University. He was later an instructor in music at Christ's Hospital in London. Ravenscroft published two collections of what he called common songs. The first, entitled Parmalia, meaning songs common to all, followed a few months later by Deutamalia, meaning a second collection of common songs. It's in this second publication which we find three blind mice, with the accompanying music. What we don't know is whether Ravenscroft was the author of the work whether he amended an already existing verse, or simply recorded a tune which is already well known. Through his musical connections and training, he would have had access to an extensive repertoire of tunes and verses. Personally, I suspect a version of Three Blind Mice was known before it was published, not least because while Ravenscroft and his work has largely been lost in the mists of time, Three Blind Mice obviously survived and mutated to the form that we know it today, and I can't imagine it came from this single source. So let's review the possible meaning of this version of the rhyme. The first line, apart from the spelling, is clearly the same as the modern version. But who is Dame Julian? Well, actually, it's Dame Julian with a J. The switch from the I to the J in printed English was first made in the 1629 edition of the King James Bible. Indeed, you can see the difference in these two versions of the Bible. On the left is the 1613 version, with James and Jesus with an I, but by 1629, on the right, Jesus has the familiar J. This was fully 20 years after Ravenscroft published his work. So who was Dame Julian? Well, Julian, also known as Julian of Norwich, was an anchoress who lived in Norwich, in the east of England, from about the years 1342 to 1416. An anchoress is a woman who decides to devote her life to God by living in isolation, in a small sealed room or cell attached to a church. In this case, St Julian's Church in Norwich. Indeed, this is where we get her title. Her actual name is not recorded. Julian seems to have decided to become an anchoress, having become seriously ill at about 30 years of age, and then had a series of visions. After a church ceremony in the presence of the bishop, during which psalms of the office of the dead are sung, as if it's her own funeral, she would then have been led to her cell, the door would have been sealed up, and she would remain there for the rest of her life. Anchoresses were not hermits, and there are records of Julian receiving regular visitors, talking through a small window. Most significantly, while in her cell, she wrote what later would become known as Revelations of Divine Love, 
These are the earliest surviving works, both by an anchoress in England and a woman in the English language. What's interesting in terms of Three Blind Mice is that while she was relatively well known in her lifetime, Julian's writings were largely forgotten until they were published in 1670, but that's almost 60 years after the appearance of Dame Julian in Ravenscroft's verse, and fully 250 years after her death. So why is she cropping up in this verse? We just don't know the answer. I thought it was also worth mentioning that Julian of Norwich is often depicted with a cat. Under the regulations for anchoresses, set out in a 13th century manuscript, they're only allowed to keep one animal, a cat. Whether there was any ancient tale that St. Julian's cat chased three blind mice is not recorded, or perhaps it implies that St. Julian provided enlightenment to three visitors blind to the word of God. I'll leave that for you to ponder on. The remainder of the rhyme seems totally disconnected from the piety of Dame Julian, and while it's written in Old English, its gory meaning is not so very different from the version we know today. In place of the farmer's wife, we have a merry miller's wife, who goes one further than cutting off the tails of mice, and scrapes tripe with her knife, tripe being the entrails of cows or sheep, and then there's the rather unappetizing suggestion that you should lick the knife. The meaning of this is beyond me, but what we do know is that versions of Three Blind Mice were being sung regularly at rounds and dinner parties for the next three centuries, but there's no record of whether it's Ravenscroft's words that are being sung. The version we know today wasn't written down until 1842 in James Orchard Halliwell's Nursery Rhymes of England. Halliwell was the first person to systematically record and interpret nursery rhymes, and this book included the subheading Obtained Principally from Oral Tradition. So it may well be that there were multiple versions of Three Blind Mice circulating at the time. I suppose I can see how the story of Julian of Norwich becomes less well known. The Dame Julian section moves to see how they run. But I'm just speculating. We'll never know for sure. By the 1860s, the three blind mice had become regulars in pantomimes and Christmas stories, and moved from the round, sung concerts and dances, to the children's nursery. So let's explore the meaning of the modern rhyme. Often there are multiple theories as to the meaning of rhymes, but with three blind mice there's only one. But this is made up for by being linked to a grisly tale. The theory which crops up in every modern book about the meaning of rhymes, and every website for that matter, comes from the imagination of Catherine Elwes Thomas. We've met her before, in my videos on Jack and Jill and Little Jack Horner. I'll provide a link above. This time, Elwes Thomas links the three blind mice to three Protestant martyrs burned to the stake of the orders of Mary I. We've met her too, as a possible basis for Mary Mary Quite Contrary. As with other theories by Elwes Thomas, later writers have enthusiastically taken up the tale, even when the evidence is sparse, so I think it's worth delving into the theory, and you can make up your own mind. The story goes that Queen Mary is the farmer's wife, apparently because she was either secretly married to her Lord Chancellor, Bishop Stephen Gardiner, or because of her actual marriage to King Philip of Spain. I'm not sure how either of these men link Mary to being a farmer, Philip, for a start, was the king of Spain, and controlled huge swathes of the New World. The explanation then gets even more obscure. Elvis Thomas implies that a derogatory term for a priest in the 16th century was to call him a mouse. To evidence this, she draws on John Kerr's 1834 book, an essay on the archaeology of popular English phrases and nursery rhymes. Kerr is a really interesting figure. He was a bit of a fantasist, and to quote Peter Anionioppi, the champions of this channel, Kerr's book was probably the most extraordinary example of misdirected labour in the history of English letters. Suffice to say, they were not fans. Elwes Thomas, however, was convinced, and she makes the further leap to claim that the mice, or priests, were actually three Protestant martyrs, killed on the orders of Mary. Hugh Latimer, Bishop of Worcester, Nicholas Ridley, Bishop of London, and Thomas Cramner, who was Archbishop of Canterbury under her brother's reign, Edward VI. These three mice were blind to the one true faith of Catholicism, and given Mary the runaround, and so she cut off their tails. Or, to put it more accurately, had Latimer and Ridley burned alive in Oxford in October 1555, and Cramner suffered the same fate in the same place in March of 1556. Collectively, they're known as the Oxford Martyrs. So what can we make of all this? 
Well, personally, I'm not convinced. To my mind, this theory is not helped by the fact that the version of Three Blind Mice Elwes Thomas quotes from was only published 300 years after the death of the Oxford Martyrs. Even if it was written and recited as a way of remembering Mary's actions, why would you use the obscure reference to blind mice, and why would it be used as rounds in concerts for years? Why not just use the name of the martyrs themselves? Everybody knew them. But let me know what you think about the hidden meaning of the rhyme. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Tale Without Tales. If you did and would like to hear more, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon. Bye for now.